Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. The shredded hologram rose. She closes the door behind her. The lights are off, but the panel next to the door dimly lights up her little cube. Dipping it in a relaxing blue hue that shows the outlines of her bed and some of her other collected belongings. She puts the pamphlets that she has left from her day out of surveying on the window sill. It's 7 p.m. now and she's so exhausted. Even after half a year of conversation practice, of training, uh, she is just tired after a few interactions. Everything is just so tiring. Her neighbor seems to be awake. Through the humming blanket of sound cancellation, she can still hear him scruffing around in his cube. <sighs> this is the scuromorphic sounds of wood. And it sounds like he's not about to sleep either. It will take probably some time for him to quiet down. Oh well. Maybe he was working. Maybe he was doing the surveying. But then did, in that case, it must have been just doing some credits with the keepers, keepers of meaningfulness. Everything is just a joke. She glances to the left. In the darkness, on the desk by her bed, she sees the fragments that had made up her beloved vintage hologram rose. Earlier that day, before she had left the cube and went out surveying, it had dropped from the ledge where it had been standing very safely since the day she had moved in. This is just a terrible start of an already challenging day in front of her. The 3D holographic object had been in her family's possession for cycles. She had, a, had always been told it was a one-of-a-kind static function object. Maybe it's because of the way today evolved, but now as it's laying there, so in front of her, broken, it actually looks like the shredded parts reveal something to her. Maybe it is really true what they say. Composite objects can reveal unknown unknowns, or at least things that one don't normally sees. She takes a closer look at one of its parts. Every surface still seems to show the whole image of the rose. But the shredded sides of this object, its cuts, seem to have formed new delta axes that reveal the previously opaque layers of the rose. They expose its render elements, the passes, the discorrelated instances and the metadata that are needed to properly render a variety of possible resolutions of this hologram rose. It seems like these shreds of the rose now have become their own portals to a moment of a past she really was never part of. The shreds now show artifacts from times when artistic entrepreneurs claimed their work through blockchain hashes. Just after the great future had been initiated by the epoch of decentralization. I think this is when the recurrent neural networks, or the RNNS, and machine learning intelligence took over. First, the realms, they took over the realms of economy, 
Then they took the realms of art, politics, law, and then finally they took over knowledge itself, which was kind of setting the brink of our great new future. She studies the leaves of the rose. These fragments seem to have acquired, have been acquired via an ERC 721 protocol, which is a, a proof of provenance from before the breach of open sea. Then another shred captures her attention. Looking at it closely, it seems to reveal that the origins of the holo hologram rose must have been imported via a client that is called Meta. Threads of this hologram rose feel so iconic. Each fragment reveals a part of the rose from a different layer, and also of a different mode of rendering. I mean, simple passes, render elements, like an ID layer or a probing opacity pass, a bump map and a nested controlled axis are clearly visible amongst the threads. She also sees the doi of the rose, which is registered at the Great Library of Google. And it's exciting to recognize a thread of the rose's smell, which is primed by Amazon, the great distributor. Wow. But then, at some point, another thread captures our eye. Is this verified CRISPR clone data? cannot be right. The breach of the open sea was a direct result of the inscription of CRISPR clone data inside the final NFT. She lays out all the pieces in front of her like a puzzle. Some of them seem to fit together. But when merged, the hologram rose that once lit up its holographic surfaces now renders into a weird amorphous resolution. On top of the shreds, a corrupt warning starts to flicker. This render may populate fungible strains. This render may populate fungible strains. This render may populate fungible strains. <sighs> Quickly, she takes the shards apart. This technology is from before the Great Wall of the Future. The Great Wall of the Future. It had all started in 1989 when the first recurring neural networks, so the RNNS, were used to generate music. Previously, artists already played around with the thought of musical creation using, for instance, Markov chains. Uh, and then since also the adoption of RNNS, uh, but slowly certain neural pathways got blocked and they blocked potentials for incidents. And this is how the future started to regurgitate itself. With the growing application of serendip inhibitors, slowly serendipity uh, became a future of the past. <sighs> what am I thinking about right now? It's like exactly what the serendipity survey today was all about. But in conversation, I could never find these words while well, going from cube to cube to cube to cube to cube, I've been confronting the inhibitants with the question, what if the most dissatisfying technology of all is the one that is just working? Which was kind of a slogan back in the days for our movement, a movement that finds its roots directly after the wall of the great future was erected. When the, ro when the world had been mapped, and indexed in its entirety, when even the tiniest speckle of dust had been scanned, every book had been written, every image had been rendered, and all possible horizons had been set. Nothing was impossible anymore. When everything has been indexed and answered, freedom can be found everywhere. And it just makes sense. 
we found what we always were looking for. Everything now at the tips of our thoughts. Things just always work. Whatever I can think of ever, it always is just right there. It's still, to some of us, something feels wrong. It's like when we slipped past the event horizon of that functional information market, things just suddenly have come to a halt. Yes, we have arrived, the future has arrived, but it's a wall, and it feels like we're just continuously floating aimlessly in this ocean of everything walled by the future. Everything is now full of options, but where is the meaning, and where can I be surprised? No one is asking questions anymore. There are no more problems to tackle, no more protests, no more boycotts, no more cancelling, no more upgrades, no more signing in, no more transferring of data or backing up at once. Everything has arrived. We inhibit the new boring human. I desperately want to come back to an unstable world. So yeah, I guess with the serendipity survey, we tried to address this. We call for a hiccup of serendipity. We call for the failure of filters. We need to burn <laughs> the silos of indexical systems. We need to burn the Dewey Decimal systems and systems of knowledge and classifications. Let's set them all on fire. As the value of the unsought has disappeared, serendipity just seems to have vaporized. We need to bring it back.